Amen. Welcome, everyone. So glad you guys are here. Welcome to everyone who is watching online. Before we jump into today's message, I want to uh, make a couple things available to you or share some things with you. We took the 15 sermons of Stand Firm, First and Second Peter, and we put together a study guide that has every Every sermon point of all 15 sermons, the scripture and the big idea and the big thought. And the goal is you can take this as a personal devotional or you can take this and lead a Bible study in your neighborhood, in your women's group, your men's group, your work group, lunch break, whatever it is. This is a great tool there available out there on the CD shelf. And we are going to charge you a whopping nothing for it because the Word of God is always free at Rock Family Church. Amen? And then I had a great time hanging out with the men of God yesterday morning. We had burritos that weighed about two and a half pounds each. And uh, I I, I called Kim on the way home, and she goes, what do you want for lunch? I go, I don't want lunch. I don't like going to eat till dinner. Anyways, we had a great time. Pastor Matt had a great word. And then uh, something else that's very cool, we just love ministering to the people needs in our community. And we have multiple cadets from the Air Force Academy that call Rock Family Church their home. And, and we're actually beginning an outreach once we can get back on base of bringing them to church. Well, uh, we got it, received an email from Noah, one of our guys who interned with us this summer. And he, they, are, they are on a complete COVID isolation, quarantine, shutdown. Like they are staying in their dorm rooms. Everything is online. There's no interaction. He said, man, pray for us. We need prayer. The morale is, is in the toilet. People are just depressed and, and so forth. And so I emailed him back and I said, man, we're praying for you. I said, would 20 to 30 pizzas help the situation out? And he emailed back and he says, I've already talked to my commander. and He said, that would be great. And we can't tell you what to bring or how many to bring, but that would be more than enough for my squadron or whatever group it was. And, and so tonight at 6 p.m., we are taking on base a bunch of pe- pizzas to lift the spirits of our cadets. That's because you guys are a generous people. And here's what's cool. When we see a need, because you guys are generous, we don't have to say, well, I don't know. Do we have a couple hundred dollars to do that? No, we just love to give at Rock. Amen? All right. We are diving into our brand new series called The Greatest of These, Faith, Hope, and Love. I I pray that you will bring your friends to this series. It's going to carry us right on into the Christmas holidays. And I encourage you to come because our nation, our city, your neighbors needs faith, hope, and love. This is an unprecedented year. I hope we never repeat 2020 like we've had. It, is, it has been a crazy, crazy year. Starts off at the beginning of the year with the mystery disease that finally hits our nation in February, March, and we go into this complete lockdown. And I call it, I call it originally, it was kind of known as the Superman virus. Here's why. Because it spreads faster than a speeding bullet. It's more powerful than a locomotive. It's able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. It lives on surfaces for days, and hoarding toilet paper is the best defense against it. I don't know if people thought the more toilet paper we have in our homes, it will absorb the virus, but we really, as a nation, we were whacked out when this disease hit, and what toilet paper has to do with a hachu kind of virus, I don't know. Um, Anyways, let's go on. As you see on your notes, we see some of the, the symptoms, and today we're talking about the antidote. The antidote. What is the antidote to these things that we are facing? And so the symptoms that we see in the natural realm is a a pandemic, and we see death, we see economic collapse, we see fires like never before. The state of California and Colorado have been on fire for the last couple months. We've had 12 hurricanes. Louisiana, we just need to stretch a hand towards Louisiana, whichever southeast that is. I mean, they've had five major hurricanes confront them. Fires are happening, and and I'm just telling you that, that... that there is there's a problem sicknesses and disease and the death toll from covid continues to go up and the result is a spiritual repercussion and that is fear 
Fear has gripped humanity in this given moment and time. The pandemic has caused panic. And here's, here's how bad the fear is. And I realize there's wisdom, okay? We have wonderful, beautiful members of Rock that are staying home because of wisdom, that it's not wise due to their, to their uh, uh, physical issues that they really need to, to stay in isolation. But fear has gripped us to the point that we're afraid to hug. Now, I'm not saying we should hug. Just understand where I'm going. We're afraid to hug somebody. We're afraid to go to the store. We're afraid to go outside. I've heard of people that, that haven't been outside, and, and, and not like in a crowd, not like in a, in a parade or a riot. I'm talking about outside on a trail by themselves. And that fear has gripped us, and, and the reality is that even when there is a vaccine, I promise you, that's just a natural solution. The vaccine is not going to make the fear go away because I forget what the percentages are that said, I'm not even going to take it. That's, that's, that's regardless. But fear will still be prevalent. And then in, in May and June, end of May going into June, we witnessed on TV a, a horrific death of a black man under the authority of a police officer. And, and, and then all of a sudden, the other natural realm, the symptom that we faced was a social of our social and racial inequities. And it's not that they weren't there. It's that we took the Band-Aid off. And, and, and in our United States of America, we, we still have racism. We still have discrimination. We, we still have all of these issues that we're facing. And the spiritual repercussion of that was a spirit of anger and a spirit of division. Hit me with that one. A spirit of anger and division. And that repercussion is, has caused that, that people are just uh, angry and they don't know why. They're just angry at life. They're angry at people. And, and it's an awkward thing because of our, our cancel culture now. That, that you're, it, it's, it's like, I don't know what to say because you say something and somebody's going to take offense. Just, just, post, just post your original thought or idea on social media and somebody will find something wrong with it. And, and you thought you said it out of innocence, out of impurity of heart and out of love. And people are offended and they're angry. And, and so you can't use these words. And, and this group of people is mad at that group of people. And, 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 then, and then people in the church culture, it's I'll go to your church as long as you're mad at what I'm mad at. And if you're not mad at what I'm mad at, then I'm going to a different church. And so it's a weird place. And then the dividing lines in our culture and our society have become even wider. And now, the men and women that protect and defend us from criminals, from crime, from keep our neighborhoods safe, now our police and our sheriff's department are being despised and looked down upon. Yes. And so it's an, it's an awkward thing because here's the reality of what happened. That yes, was, was, a, was there a bad policeman or some in Minnesota? Absolutely. That was a crime that we witnessed. But the very thing that a person despises is, is if you don't deal with the anger and you don't deal with the unforgiveness, you'll carry it over. What do you mean? Well, let's just, let's just go there. The black community says because a black man commits a crime, crime don't judge all of the black community because of what one man or one woman did or the hispanic community or the white community or the asian community because that would be a, a bias that would be a discrimination but yet what did we do as a culture and i'm not saying you i'm saying but as our culture because of a crime of a policeman now police Policemen and women are despised and looked down upon. We have multiple that attend here at church. Before service, I asked one of them. I, I caught them in the hallway, and I said, Hey, I'm going to touch on this. Are, are, how are things going? You know, is, is kind of all that tension gone? She says, No, not at all. And people are hating on a group of people because of what someone did 1,500 miles away. Are you following me? Are there bad policemen and women? Yes. 
but there's a whole bunch of good ones. Are there bad white men and women? Yes, but there's a truckload of good ones. Are there bad black men and black women? Yes, but there are truckloads of good ones. And we have to break past, break past this anger and see the light and see the truth. And then it is spilled over. We're so angry. We're so angry that, man, we're ready. We're, I mean, literally, there have been fist fights over people wearing or not wearing a mask. I'm sorry. And there's the no mask wearers and the mask wearers and the no mask wearers hate the mask wearers and the mask wearers hate the no mask wearers because don't you know that you're going to infect me and don't you know that I have freedom? And we're in this contention and anger over a mask. But can I share something with the white folk in the room? Maybe it's some of the first times that you or I faced the reality of discrimination that I mistakenly left my mask in the car and I walk in and I am forbidden of entrance because I'm not wearing a mask. When in the lifetime of some people in this room, people of color were not permitted into a restaurant or a store or a location or a restroom, not because of a mask, but because the color of their skin. I can change a mask, I can't change the color of my skin. Are you following me? Yes. But, but I, I was offended. What do you mean you won't let me in? Because I have a mask. How do you know that I don't have a medical condition? Right? But it was a wake-up call for us as, as, as those people that maybe had never experienced that. And then in the last three months, red versus blue. Oh, I hate you. And, and, and red hates blue, and blue hates red, and red is, is the enemy, and blue is the enemy, and we're fighting against one another and looking down on one another, and, and, and we, hate, we hate our fellow Americans. Watch this. We hate them because maybe the color of their skin, and now we hate them because they want to vote for this person, and I want to vote for that person. How childish are we Amen. as a people? We're, celeb- we're celebrating our veterans and, and, and that have given their life to give you and I the freedom to vote. And now we're going to look down. I don't think they gave their blood for us to fight over blue or red. They gave their blood to give us the freedom to give our vote and to cast our vote. And the one that gets the most votes wins. I think it's a disgrace. United we stand. Divided we fall. United States of America or the divided states of America. And now when fear goes rampant and anger goes full throttle, then number three, you end up with, in the natural realm, the future is grim. All vision for tomorrow evaporates. It's a defeated outlook on life. And and how are we going to make it? And what if this disease gets me? And that leads to a spirit, a spirit of repercussion. Come on spirit of repercussion, the despair, hopelessness, and apathy. Despair, hopelessness, and apathy. That when the future is grim, we lose all hope. Why, why try? People are, are, are thinking more about suicide and committing suicide more in the last probably six, seven months than any other time. Uh, 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 Child abuse, domestic violence is on the increase. Drug abuse and drug overdose is rampant. This is just from the month of May. Check this out for the month of May. Drug overdose deaths in Colorado, 73 deaths in all of 2019. In the month of May, we had 128 from a drug overdose. Depression, anxiety, and fear 
source. So what's the source of all of this? The source of all of this is found in in John chapter 10. Jesus said the thief's purpose, the devil's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. And my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. The sickness and the fear, the anger and division, the despair and hopelessness. Church, we have to wake up. We are in a spiritual battle and a spiritual fight. Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus and he said this in chapter 6, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Hear me, we're not fighting against a disease. And we're not fighting against just racism and discrimination. We are, we are, but we are against the rulers and the authorities of the unseen world. We are fighting against mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. What did Jesus teach us? That a, that a house united will stand, but a house divided will fall. And, and, and that, that division comes, and it, and it hinders our progress as a nation, as a people, and as the church of Jesus Christ. So what is the antidote? The antidote is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and it's where we're going to spend the next few weeks as we head into the holidays. Three things will last forever. Faith hope, and love. Now, they're all three important, but the greatest of these is love. And I'm going to break this down of the antidote today, and then we're going to take these, and we're going to bring some good news to our city and to our community. I invite you to invite your friends to join you at home or join you uh, online or join you here in person. So let's go for it. What's the, what's the antidote? Number one, faith is the antidote to fear. Faith is the antidote to fear. Hope is the antidote to despair. Hope is the antidote to despair. It says in Colossians 3, since you have been raised with, to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of this earth. For you died to this life and your real life, your real life, everybody say real life. Your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Remember that point. Point number three, love is the antidote to anger. When someone is mad, someone is angry at you, they don't need you to fight back. They don't need you to growl up. They need love. Now, even when you give love, they will bite. I don't like you. Leave me alone. Step back. You just need a hug. No, no, don't touch me. Don't be near me. They're a wounded tiger, and they need love. Love. Number four, the church is meant to be a refuge of faith, hope, and love to a fearful, hopeless, and angry world. This is our mission right now in 2020 and 21 to be a refuge of faith and hope and love to a fearful, hopeless, and angry world. Because, see, the world can't give what it doesn't have, only the church has this. And in the absence of faith, fear will increase. In the absence of hope, despair will increase. And in the absence of the God kind of love, anger will increase. And God said, mandated, that the church is the only place that you can get these things, and we are to be a dispensary. Colorado Springs has enough dispensaries around, all right? And it's not, and some people say, yes, and they they release some happiness. We... This dispensary, Rock Family Church, the dispensary of New Life, of Woodman and Discovery Church, the dispensaries, the city is covered with dispensaries of faith and hope and love. And we are the communicators of that vision. Number five, when we gather, we create an atmosphere that is greater than fear, despair, and anger. See, here's the power of the church, and, and, and we, we shut down the church for a season, and I, and I think when the churches were closed, fear and despair and anger blossomed. It, it's it's kind of like when you go on vacation and you let your yard go, and all of a sudden you come home and the weeds have just taken over. You didn't plan on the weeds, but it's like, holy smokes, what? Oh my gosh. 
because there was no intending to it. And I think when the church shut down for those six, eight, ten weeks, whichever it was, and some still aren't open, I think it has hindered the fruit of love and hope and faith from growing and prospering. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, I says, Jesus said, I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. There's power in unity. Are you following me? There is power in unity. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I'm there among them. We have people gathering in their homes right now. And they're gathering together and the presence and the Spirit of God is there. But how cool is it when we can gather? How cool was it before COVID-19 when we could come together for three services and youth services and kids services and, and young adult services? How cool is it when the body of Christ comes together? There is a collective power that takes place when we come together that we do and fulfill the works of Jesus. And so the mission is bigger than just you or I coming to church. It's not about, well, I came to church, chink, chink, got my brownie points with God. No, when we come to church, we become the, the, the dispensary, the outlet for peace, hope, love, faith, and life to come upon people. People wander in here every Sunday. They don't know why they're here. They don't know why they came. They just, they just came. And they're looking for faith. They're looking for hope. And they're looking for love. And we want to drip on them. And you can't drip on somebody unless you're full of it and soaked and saturated with it. Right. Amen? Amen? Number six. When we worship, we exalt God above our problems. Some of you struggled to worship today. It's just been a pretty, it's been pretty, I'm just telling you, it's been a pretty anxious week. I'm just I'm telling you, I've been watching a lot of news, and I'm CNN and Fox News and MSNBC and ABC, NBC, and, and I don't like the way they called that, and I don't like the way I appreciate they did that, and, and I'm sure there's cheating going on, and I'm sure there's this and that, and I'm going, what do you want for dinner sweetheart nothing I'm not hungry I can't eat my stomach's all upset I, I've got diarrhea I'm just all <laughs> be healed in Jesus name <laughs> watch what does worship do I'm going to take my eyes off of all of this stuff and God I'm going to worship you and I'm going to come in your presence and I'm going to put my focus and my attention on you because you're my hope you're my faith, you're my love, you're my peace, you're my answer, you are who I live for. I don't live for the things of this life in this world. And so note this on your notes. Hope rises and falls by the focus of our attention. Yes. Hope rises and falls. You sit there, shh, Watch the news all day, and who said this, and who said that, and Republicans said this, and Giuliani said that, and Biden said this, and Biden's camp said that, and, and, and CNN, and Fox News, and, and you watch that for about 12 hours? I don't know why we should even live. It's just, I mean, it's all over. It's over. It's just done. Our country's going to the pot. But you get in the Word of God. And you start hearing the words of life. And maybe you turn off that TV and you say, I'm not going to just read a verse or two. I'm going to read several books of the New Testament. I'm not going to just read a chapter. I'm going to, I'm going to hit me OD on the Word of God. Yes. Where you find me and I, I've passed out on the couch and my Bible has slapped on me. And like there's been 14 chapters highlighted and underlined and this is for you, Dean. And, and your family finds you with a, with a, a, a word of God overdose. And when they wake you up, you say, 
I will not fear, for I walk in the shadow of, uh, of the Almighty, and He is my shield and my buckler, and I'm not fear what 10,000 fall at my right hand, a 1,000 my other, but I know that my God is with me, and my God, and all of a sudden you just wake up quoting the Word of God. Amen. Hope rises or falls by the focus of our attention. Disciples are out in a boat. Jesus said, hey, you guys go ahead. I'll catch another boat. Disciples are out in the boat and the storms are rising and they're afraid and they're not going to sure if they're going to make it. And Jesus sees them from afar off. He doesn't rent a speedboat to catch up. He doesn't paddle really fast to catch up. He just, I believe he had to jog. It says he walked on water. I believe he jogged on water. We'll watch the replay. But just to get there to him, it was like, ching, 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 ching. And they see a figure coming. Now, here are 12 grown men who act like 12 junior high girls. <laughs> they're in the boat. They're, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to die. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Ah! There's a ghost. And the other 11, oh, it is. Oh, we're doomed. Really? You guys walk with Jesus. And you think you're seeing ghosts. And, and Jesus cries out and he says, hey, 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 cool it, cool it, it's I. And, and Peter goes, I recognize his voice. Lord, if it's... Lord, if that's, if that's really you, bid me to come. Jesus goes, hey, dude, come. Peter... The only recorded human being to ever walk on water. Jesus was the Son of God. As he kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked above the wind, the wave, the storms, the lightning, and the water. He walked above life circumstances. But then it says in the scripture that he saw the strong wind and the waves and he began to sink. Watch me. When he took his eyes off of Jesus and he put it on Trump and he put it on Biden, he began to sink. Jesus is the savior of the world. Not the next president. I'm just going to be blunt. I've lived through a lot of them. I don't like to admit it how old I am, but I've lived through a lot of presidents. First one I remember is President Nixon getting impeached because I knew he did something really, really bad and they took his allowance away. <laughs> and I remember Gerald Ford becoming president and he just stumbled and fumbled everywhere. It was like the, the you know, just show him tripping and fumbling and he didn't get reelected because everyone was mad at the Republicans. The Republicans are bad. So they voted in the Democratic president, Jimmy Carter, and, and, and we went through the oil crisis. And Jimmy Carter had a one-term wonder and, and then Ronald Reagan came in and, 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 and man, we saw him do some things, but, but I'm just going to be blunt. We saw communism fall and, and some things change worldwide. But for the church, I was a youth pastor in those days. It didn't really change the church. He was a good president. And then, and then after him, we get George Bush Sr. He's a one-term wonder as well. And then after him, we, we, get, we get Bill Clinton. And, 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 and everyone's like, oh no, Bill Clinton. Okay. I was a youth pastor in the church. Bill Clinton didn't change the church. Bill Clinton didn't change the spiritual environment. He even he's having an affair in the White House. They impeach him because of his actions. And, they, and then our nation says, we're going to reelect him. We like this guy. <laughs> okay. Then, 20 years ago, we have a fight just like we're in right now. Who won? I won. I won. You won. I won. You won. No, I won. We're going to... And George Bush wins. A Christian. A Christian man. Hallelujah didn't change the spiritual climate of our nation yeah. didn't change the spiritual climate of church didn't change a thing and then Obama comes in he's got his two terms Bush had his two terms Obama has his two terms and then we got Trump has his one term and now it looks like we're going to have, a, have, a, have another president 
And this is twisting some people up and jacking you up so bad. As long as you keep your eyes on a political figure, Joe Biden is not the hope of this world, neither is Trump of this, the hope of this world. And I've just got news for some of you. You need to bring down your idols off your shelf and put Jesus back as Lord. Amen. Yes. Are you hearing me? And, 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 and some people some people are like, where, where are you at? Are you Republican or are you Democrat? I'm neither Republican and I'm not a Democrat. I'm a believer and a follower of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Jesus is my king. Jesus is my leader that I submit to and that I yield to. And I'm, I didn't lose one ounce, one smidgen of sleep last night. Amen. Because I'm going to just go there. I don't care who wins this election? Dear Jesus, blasphemy in the church. <laughs> why, why don't you care? Because it doesn't change my mission, my focus, my goal, my ambition, my call, and the direction of my life. I, 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 you say, well, but if, if, if this one wins, and if the House and the Democrats and the, and the Senate and the Congress and all this, it's going to change. It might make a few bumps or, or a few valleys in the road one way or another. I don't care. Nobody is perfect, and the Democrats aren't perfect, and the Republicans aren't perfect, and we got to stop fighting red versus blue, and we need to become purple. Yes. Amen. We are the United States of America. And I'm just going to say something, folks. I'm not political. I stay right in the middle. You want to know why? Because we have people that call Rock Family Church their home, and they are Republicans, and we have people that call Rock Family Church their home, and they are Democrats. And when you pick on one of them, you're picking on my brother, you're picking on my sister. Don't ask me to choose. Well, well, bless God with you if you... I mean, stop it. Love must prevail. Amen. What is going to prevail in this house is going to be the love of God, the peace of God, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, the kindness of God, the faith of God, and the hope of God, and the Democrats or Republicans that aren't the hope of the world. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is. And when you come in this house, we're not red and blue. We're in love with Jesus Christ and we're purple because purple displays royalty and he is the royalty, the one that gave his life for you and I. Whew. I gotta share this. Stop viewing your faith through your politics and start viewing politics through your faith. I'm gonna say it again. Stop viewing your faith through politics and start viewing politics through your faith. In other words, my, if, if I view my faith through my politics, then today is an up or a down day depending on who wins or who loses. My faith in Jesus Christ is consistent no matter who wins or who loses. And I view politics through faith and that walk with him. Psalms 27 says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Give me, let me give you the 2020 translation. Some trust in presidents and some in politics and some trust in money and some in their own abilities and some trust social media and some trust what others, uh, what a friend said. But as for me and my house, we trust in the name of the Lord our God and in the living truthful word of God. Amen? And so we walk in that victory. We've got to wrap this up. I'm wound up. Here's what we do. Here's the antidote, number seven. We'll get you out of here. We'll go fast, trust me. When we pray, God's power is released upon the earth. How do we change the climate of anger and fear and despair? With prayer that your prayers make a difference. Matthew 18, 18, truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. When you pray, it changes the climate of our community. When you pray, it changes the climate of our community. Jesus said in Matthew 28, he came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth, therefore go. What was he saying? 
I have the keys of death and hell. I have the authority. You go in my name. In my name, the hands on the sick and they will recover. In my name, you'll do the works that I did and even greater works than these will you do, Jesus said. Jesus has empowered us to represent him. And so we do that. And so how, what do we do? Every service, we're starting with this prayer. And I, I hope that you'll uh, grab it, take a picture of it, pray it every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take authority over sickness, fear, despair, anger, and apathy. They cannot reside upon this house of Rock Family Church, our families, or the community of Colorado Springs. We declare their dominion and their authority is broken and that health, faith, hope, love, and passion rules and reigns over us and our city in Jesus' name. Amen. Number eight, biblical teaching ignites faith. Why do you come to church? Why do you watch online? Because you need to hear the biblical teaching to inspire you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And when you hear the word, it will, it will work in your life. But this scripture is, is very true that faith comes by hearing. And if you hear the wrong things, you'll start to believe the wrong things. There are all kinds of of absolute ridiculousness that is online, the people are like, no, it's true. My uncle said. I watched a video yesterday. I watched a video yesterday, and I was like, this is the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen. And these people are all up in it. It's, it's true. You don't know. You don't know. Get yourself to church every Sunday, every Wednesday. Get your kids here. Get filled up with the word and get a little faith to counterbalance the, the lies and deceptions you're hearing in this world. Number nine, when we demonstrate love, we break division and build unity. Love will break down walls. Come on, hear me. Hating Joe Biden is not going to make you a better person and make this country a better place. And hating Trump is not going to make you a better person and is not going to make this country a better place. And can I just share for some that are a little bit deceived, neither of them are the Antichrist. I say that with full confidence. All right? The stuff I see online that people are saying and demonizing and, and, and doing things... And, and, Come on. And I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go out here on a limb, folks. And I'm just going to say, you know where I'm coming from? And I just got to say, I just got to put it out there. I watched Biden's speech last night. And all I'm going to say is the words I heard from that man were of unity and that the country needs to come together. And I fully and unconditionally stand behind that vision Amen. that we need to stop thinking red and blue and we need to be the United States of America. I can support that. I can find stuff that I support in all of our presence. I'm not going to have a president that I agree with everything. But we need love. And if you see a police officer sitting in a restaurant in a coffee shop, you need to stop by their table and you need to walk up to them and say, I don't want to intrude, I don't want to interrupt, but thank you for the service that you do for our community. I appreciate you. Because they feel underappreciated. And you need to look for a person that's a different color than you. And, 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 and white people need to go to people of color and you need to look them in the eye and you need to look at them and say, I just want to break down any stereotypes or facades. And I want you to know that I love you as my brother or sister in Christ. And I love you and I respect you and I value you. And, and, and I'm thankful for my relationship. Or I'm thankful that I get to work with you. Whatever the context is. And people of color need to go to people of no color. I mean, we're white. We lay in the sun to get color, right? <laughs> people of color need to go to people of no color and do the same and look them in the eye. I am intentional when I am out in public and I see I'm probably more intentional when I'm out in public and I see a person of a different race than I, I'm probably more intentional to make eye contact with them and to look them in the eye and nod. I'll even pull down my mask and go, how you doing? So they can see my smile and they don't question what's under the mask. And you'd be amazed at the peace it brings. Colossians 3 and verse 14, we'll wrap it up with this. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together 
in perfect harmony. Would you stand to your feet? Thank you for giving me a few extra minutes today. I promise I'll do better next week. Church, I'm just going to give my heart. My goal is not to offend you today. My hope was to steer you back to Jesus off of the circumstances. And I pray that you do come back. And I pray that you would make this church your home. And I pray that we would reach more people for Jesus Christ. In the darkest hour our world is facing, light shines the brightest in the darkness. And I'm telling you, make me bring back the third service. Make me push these back walls back out and that wall that way and make me expand the auditorium. Make me add another campus out east in the middle of Falcon, Calhan, Peyton out there. Make me start a campus out there because we're so full here and more and more people need to hear Jesus. Make me do it. Bring your friends. Be vessels of hope, love, and faith. Father, thank you for my friends, my brothers, my sisters in Christ. Lord, I pray for unity here in this house, that the unity and the love would begin with us. And God, I pray for revival in our nation, but more so, I pray for revival within the heart and the life of every person in the sound of my voice, that we would come more alive for the living King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, than we ever have in every breath we have taken previously on this earth, that we'll live hotter, burn brighter, and let the love and the light of Jesus Christ shine out of us greater than ever before. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Heads up, eyes open, everybody looking around. We're not here to judge you, condemn you, assess you, or evaluate you. We believe that you have what it takes to do that yourself. And if you're not where you know you could or should be in your walk with God, Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest. If you're tired of doing life on your own and you want the God that created this entire universe, if you want all of his power and resources on your team and your side, all we have to do is surrender. God, I surrender to you. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. And God loves us, forgives us, accepts us, and adopts us into his family. I'm asking those of you who have never surrendered your life to Jesus to do that today. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to ask you to put a hand up that says, I surrender. This place is going to scream, shout, cheer for you. Someone will come and pray with you right where you stand, and your life will be forever changed. Let's go for it. Starting new. Starting over in your walk with God. Maybe you need a do-over. Here we go. Let's go for it. On three, surrender that hand and keep it up till someone gets to you. Here we go. One, two, come on, three. Shoot that hand up really, really high. Anybody in this place? There's one over there. God bless you, sir. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the service. If you live here in Colorado Springs or you're going to be in the city, I hope that you'll come and experience the service firsthand. And for those of you that are enjoying the ministry and you're being fed to on a weekly basis, I invite you to partner with us financially and make an investment into the mission and the vision of Rock Family Church. And lastly, if you've never made a commitment and a decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, would you make that decision today? Why wait till tomorrow? Why wait till next weekend? I dare you to pray this prayer with me. Would you close your eyes? Would you pray this prayer with me and repeat it? It goes like this. Pray this with me. Say, dear God, forgive me of all of my sins and mistakes. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I invite him to be the Lord of my life. Thank you for loving me and forgiving me. My life is now in your hands. 
Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Hey, thanks for making that commitment. Will you email us at info at rockfamilychurch.com. Tell us about your new decision to stand up big and live strong for Jesus Christ. We'd love to celebrate with you. God bless you guys. We'll see you next weekend.